A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, Scripture can find all things under the power of sin, that through faith in Jesus Christ, the promise might be given to those who believe. Before faith came, we were held in custody under law, confined for the faith that was to be revealed. Consequently, the law was our disciplinary for Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a disciplinary. For through faith, you are all children of God in Christ Jesus. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free person. There is not male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise. Ebum Domini. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds, glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Recall the wondrous deeds that he has wrought, his portents and the judgments he, utter he has uttered. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he the Lord is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. While Jesus was speaking, a woman from the crowd called out and said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you and the breasts at which you nursed. He replied, Rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. Today's Gospel for Saturday of the 27th week in Ordinary Time calls, I think, for a little bit of Marian catechesis. Today's Gospel tells us of the credentials, we could say, that Christ deems most important for one to be considered a true kinsman of his, which goes beyond mere blood. Again. We could say that today's gospel tells us of the credentials Christ himself 
deems most important for one to be considered a true kinsman of his, which goes beyond the ties, we could say, of mere blood. These words of our Lord show us that the fulfillment of the will of God is more important than mere blood relations. Thus, Our Lady herself, in other words, is more united to her Son by virtue of her perfect fulfillment of what God asked of her in her vocation as the Mother of God and as the preeminent disciple of Christ, rather than by the Holy Spirit's using her to make Christ's physical body in his human nature. And this has been a constant catechesis of Holy Mother Church throughout the ages. Again, Our Lady herself is more united by her Son by virtue of her perfect fulfillment of what God asked of her rather than by the Holy Spirit's using her to make Christ's body. You know, the woman cries out in the crowd today, uh, blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast that nursed you. And Jesus responds, nay, rather, nay, rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. In other words, my mother has done just that. So this is a very, very important catechetical teaching for us, for each one of us personally to evaluate, if you will, how close we are to Christ in our true, authentic discipleship. Now, there are many other passages, many, that show forth this same teaching, doctrine, and we could say sentiment. For example, Matthew 12, while he was still speaking to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood outside asking to speak to him, but he replied to the man who told him this, who is my mother and who are my brethren? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, indeed to the crowd, he said, here are my mother and my brethren, all those who were listening to him attentively as his disciples. For whoever does the will of my father, Jesus continues, for whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and my sister and my mother, he says. All these listen to, listening to me attentively are my brother and my sister and my mother. Now, Jesus obviously loved Mary, his most blessed mother, and he also loved St. Joseph, his foster father. But he uses this episode in today's gospel and, and these others that I'll be sharing with you to teach us that in his kingdom, mere human blood ties do not take precedence. Jesus regards the person who does the will of his heavenly Father as a member of his own family. Therefore, even though it means sometimes going against natural family feelings or blood ties, a person sometimes has to do just that whenever it is needed in order to perform the mission that the heavenly Father has entrusted to him or her. Remember the adolescent boy Jesus' words to Mary and Joseph when they found him in the temple after searching for him for three days? Did you not know that I must be about my father's house and business? The adolescent boy Jesus tells his parents. Matthew 10 tells us, again, Jesus' own words, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. So again, sometimes it means going against family ties of blood and family feelings. If it means so that the person in their authentic Christian discipleship may indeed carry out the mission that the Heavenly Father, through His Son in the Holy Spirit, has entrusted to that particular person. Remember, each one of us has been granted a particular sphere of influence. Matthew 19 tells us, Everyone who has given up homes or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands. How's that for a litany? for the sake of my name, will receive a hundred times more and will inherit eternal life. For many who are first will be last, and those who are last will be first. Again, words of Jesus. 
what it means sometimes giving up. Huh? And also from St. Mark's Gospel, quote, And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they went to him and called him, and a crowd was sitting about him. And they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside asking for you. And he replied, Again, this is one of the synoptic gospels to one of the earlier ones I just shared with you. Who are my mother and my brothers? And then looking around at those who sat about him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Indeed, whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. The early church father, Theophylact, says, Quote, Jesus did not say these things to disown his mother, but rather to show all of us that Mary is worthy of honor not only on account of having given birth to him, but also because she possessed all of the virtues, that is to say, as the perfect Christian disciple. That's a nice summation of this catechesis from this church father Theophylact. Jesus did not say this to disown his mother, but rather to show us that Mary is worthy of honor, not only on account of having given birth to him, but also because she possessed all of the virtues. The church would go so far as to say, but preeminently because she possessed all the virtues. The church reminds us, too, that the Blessed Virgin, in the course of her son's preaching, because remember, Mary heard Jesus saying these things, because she was part of the group that had come, that he was informed about, that wanted to speak to him, and then he gives these responses. Huh? The church reminds us, too, that the Blessed Virgin, in the course of her son's preaching, received the words herself, whereby in extolling a kingdom beyond the concerns and ties of mere flesh and blood, he declared, blessed rather, those who heard and kept the word of God, just as she had done and was faithfully still doing during his three years of public life. That's from Lumen Gentium, number 58 of the Second Vatican Council. In the course of her son's preaching, Mary received the words whereby in extolling a kingdom beyond the concerns and ties of mere flesh and mere blood, he declared blessed, rather, those who heard and kept the word of God, just as she was faithfully doing. So again, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts that fed you. But he replied to the woman, Blessed, rather, blessed, rather, are those who hear the word of God, and keep it. And we read earlier, for example, at the time of the Nativity, that Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 148, tells us very clearly why Mary is the preeminent Christian disciple, our preeminent role model, as someone merely and fully human herself. No divinity in Mary whatsoever, obviously. Why, human to human, if you will, she is the perfect Christian disciple, the perfect model for us, our loving mother, to look to, to see how we can live fully the mission that the Heavenly Father has entrusted to each one of us. Catechism number 148 says this, The Virgin Mary most perfectly embodies, those are strong words, my friends, the Blessed Virgin Mary most perfectly embodies the obedience of faith. Obedience of faith. By faith, Mary welcomes the tidings and promise brought by the Archangel Gabriel, believing that, quote, with God nothing will be impossible, and so gives her assent, quote, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. Her cousin Elizabeth greeted her, Quote, blessed is she, referring to Mary, who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. It is for this faith that all generations have called Mary blessed. 
And the very next paragraph, number 149 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, says, throughout her life, again, strong words, throughout her life, and until her last ordeal, when Jesus, her son, died on the cross, Mary's faith never wavered. She never ceased to believe in the fulfillment of God's word. And so the church venerates in Mary the purest realization of faith. Throughout her life and until her last ordeal, when Jesus, her son, died on the cross, Mary's faith never wavered. What a message for each one of us, huh? Especially during an election year, which I'm about to get to. Throughout her life and until her last ordeal, when Jesus, her son, died on the cross, Mary's faith never wavered. She never ceased to believe in the fulfillment of God's word. And so the church venerates Mary in the purest realization of faith. So, a couple of questions for us today, applying this gospel to our lives, so that each one of us personally and individually can live the mission that the Heavenly Father, through His Son, in the Holy Spirit, has entrusted to each one of us, whether single, married, or a consecrated priest, brother, or sister, so that we can fully evangelize the sphere of influence that He has placed us in, and he has placed each one of us in a sphere of influence, even the cloistered contemplative nun has a sphere of influence in which to influence. You want proof of that? Read St. Therese's story of a soul and how she lived amidst her own contemplative sisters in the Carmelite convent. So a couple of questions for each one of us today, especially during an election year. And even contemplative nuns vote. Let us not forget that. Do we possess the faith of Mary? This purest realization and obedience of faith. Do we possess the faith of Mary, especially when it is crucial to do so during an election year? Do we possess the faith of Mary when so many questions about the dignity of human life are put before us on the ballot? When so many questions of the dignity of human life are placed before us in the voting booth? Do we possess the faith of Mary when so many questions about the reality of intrinsic evils, that is, certain things that are always and everywhere wrong, are put before us, such as abortion, euthanasia, contraceptive mandates, contraception in and of itself, so-called homosexual marriage, human cloning, embryonic stem cell research, and the like. These things that are always and everywhere wrong, what the church teaches as the bride of Christ, through her bridegroom who founded her, teaches to be intrinsic evils. That is, they are always and everywhere wrong. They can never, ever be carried out because they militate directly against the innate, the innate dignity of the human person who is called to love. In paragraph 11 of Familiaris Consortio, Blessed Pope John Paul II states very clearly, quote, the most fundamental and innate vocation of the human person is to love. Quote, end quote. The most fundamental and innate dignity of the human person is to love. So do we possess this faith of Mary? The fact that the Virgin Mary most perfectly embodies the obedience of faith. St. Therese says, to abandon the mother 
is but one step away from abandoning the sun. That little 24-year-old doctor of the church. To abandon the mother is but one step away from abandoning the son. And St. Aelred says, whoever fails to honor the mother clearly dishonors the son. What a message of life. What a message of life. Regarding our devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Pope Benedict XVI tells us this, Mary's womb was the space from which God was able to gain access into humanity by becoming one of us when his second divine personage took on a fully human nature. Mary's womb was the space from which God was able to gain access into humanity. What a message of life. What a message for life right there. We celebrate our personal relationship with Mary because it has fostered so profoundly the ultimate personal relationship, our personal relationship with Christ himself. Because we have fallen in love with the bridegroom, Jesus, we appreciate and honor his mother, Mary. Indeed, Mary helps us to love Jesus, to yield to the Holy Spirit, and to let it be done to us according to God's word. An allusion to Luke 1.38, Mary's own words, the fiat. Let it be done to us according to his word for us. Mary tells us to do whatever Jesus tells us, an allusion to the wedding feast at Cana, her words to the chief wine steward, John chapter 2, verse 5. Mary tells us to do whatever Jesus tells us, even during an election year. Mary will never rest until we rest in her son. Our relationship with Mary focuses us on Jesus. Because of this, we value our relationship with her, the mother of God. God bless you.